In this video, I'm going to look at the key organic terms. So the way we'll do it is, I'll put a term on the screen. So we've got hydrocarbon on there. Just wait a little while for you to think about the definition if you want to test yourself. Otherwise, just wait and the definition will appear. And then I'll give some examples. So hydrocarbon first. That's a compound containing hydrogen and carbon only. So there's some examples of some hydrocarbons. And you can see the only atoms present are carbon and hydrogen. Next one is saturated. So these are compounds that contain single carbon-carbon bonds. So they're all classed as saturated compounds. So you can see all the carbons are connected by single bonds. You can see in this one here, we've got this double bond here, but that's not a carbon-carbon bond, it's a carbon-oxygen bond. So really, we're only interested in the carbon-carbon bonds. These are all single, so this is classed as saturated. Unsaturated. So these are compounds with multiple carbon-carbon bonds. So that includes carbon-carbon double and carbon-carbon triple bonds and also benzene rings. And you can see in the brackets two representations we use for benzene. Hexagon with a big circle in the middle or a hexagon with alternating carbon-carbon double and single bonds. So there's three of each type and they alternate. So there's some examples of those. So obviously carbon-carbon double, carbon-carbon triple. This one here, the benzene ring is in that format. And this one here, the benzene ring is shown in that format. So functional group next. So that's the group of atoms in the molecule responsible for the characteristic reactions of a compound. So each of these compounds here contains a different functional group. So moving across the screen, we've got the carbon-carbon double bond, that's an alkene. We've got the OH group, so that's an alcohol. We've got the halogen, so in that case it's a chlorine, that's called a halogenoalkane. Bottom line now, so we've got this C double bond O and an H on the C as well, that's an aldehyde. And a C double bond O, but with carbons either side, that's a ketone. Homologous series now. That's a series of organic compounds having the same functional group, but with each successive member, so one after the next, differs by CH2. So I've got two to show you. The alcohols first, so you can see very clearly the difference between the first and the second is the CH2. So there it is there. And the next one down, CH2, where everything else is the same. And of course, they've all got this OH group, and that makes them alcohols. And the other one to show you is the carboxylic acids. So they all contain the functional group COOH. And the difference between this one and this one is CH2. The difference between this one and this one is CH2, and so on. So the next one we've got is straight chain. So that's a continuous chain of carbon atoms joined together with no branches. So all the branches is a shorter carbon chain. So the examples I'm going to show you first are all the same molecule. So that's called hexane. That's obviously a continuous chain of carbons. Sometimes it's represented like that because in reality the carbons are kinked it's still classed as a straight chain, even though it's a straight line, and that's because that's a continuous chain of carbons. And as you get more into organic chemistry, you'll come across skeletal formula, that's also hexane, and that's obviously a continuous carbon chain, so it's classed as a straight chain. I've got this one as well, just to show you that that's also classed as a straight chain, because this thing sticking off the chain is not a carbon. It's going to a double bond to an oxygen, so that's not a shorter carbon chain. And so therefore, there's your continuous carbon chain. That's all you've got really in terms of carbon. 
and so this is classed as a straight chain. So branch chain now. So the main or longest continuous chain of carbons has at least one shorter carbon chain branching off from a carbon atom within the main chain. So the first one I'll show you is this one here. So we've got a main continuous chain of this one here. This is five long and then off the carbon, the second carbon here. So it's within the main chain. We've got this carbon branch coming off here. So this is a branched chain. There's another example of a branch chain. So again, we've got this continuous carbon chain, the longest carbon chain, and then we've got a branch coming off that carbon there and a branch coming off that carbon there. Now, I'm going to show you this one as well because this is a common mistake I see as a teacher. Some students might think this is branched, kind of looks branched, it looks very similar to that one, but there's a con that's a continuous carbon chain, so that's not branched. Just a few more now, so aromatic next. So that's just a compound with at least one benzene ring. Remember, there's your two representations for benzene. So basically, as long as it's got something like that or something like that, it's classed as aromatic. So there's three examples for you there. Aliphatic, so that's a compound containing carbon and hydrogen joined together in straight chains, branch chains, or non-aromatic rings. So basically, it's any non-aromatic organic compound. So as long as it hasn't got a benzene ring, we'll call it aliphatic. So there's some examples there. So even this one here, that's not a benzene ring because we're missing the third alternating carbon-carbon double bond. So these haven't got benzene rings, so they are classed as aliphatic compounds. Alicyclic now. So that's an aliphatic compound arranged in non-aromatic or no benzene rings with or without side chains. So basically, it's got a non-aromatic ring in the structure. So there's some examples there. So you can see this first one doesn't have any side chains. This one does. And this is not a benzene, remember, because it's missing that third carbon-carbon double bond. So... These are all alicyclic. And then the final one is cyclic, and that's just a compound that contains a ring as part of the structure. So basically any kind of ring. So this can be aliphatic or aromatic. And so I've gone for those two. It's got a ring, and it doesn't matter that it's not a benzene ring because cyclic just has to contain a ring. So, and this one here, that's a benzene ring, but it's still cyclic because any kind of ring makes it cyclic. And that's it.